Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson, and thanks for coming along tonight. What we're going to be looking at is uh, some of the latest and greatest technology for Windows XP, and you've been watching uh, over the past few weeks, we've been looking over some of the technologies coming out from the new Ubuntu uh, operating system that comes out this Thursday, and we're all uber excited to uh, get a copy of that uh, gutsy given from Ubuntu. Uh, but as we've been looking at the spinning cube and the you know the the 3D based operating systems I know that there's a lot of Windows XP users out there who are just thinking you know I'd love to be able to use those features but I don't have the ability to switch or you know I don't want to go through having to reformat my computer and uh, learn a new operating system let alone you know the potential hassles that uh, you would have to go through by switching operating systems maybe you've been using Windows for a long time maybe all of your computer life and uh, you don't want to make the switch so today we're going to be looking at a uh, software product from Otaku Software and uh, what that does. Now they've got two products essentially that are going to give us some great uh, three-dimensional features for the Windows XP desktop. One is called Top Desk and Top Desk is basically going to give you the, the task switching features of, uh, that are very similar to the Windows Vista operating system. And I'm sure you've seen that with the Flip 3D uh, effects and things like that. So we're going to be looking into that. Uh, and the other uh, program that they offer is called Desk Space. These two pro programs can be purchased together and you can save some money. It only costs about $30 US. And uh, now Desk Space is going to give us that 3D cube, but here's the kicker it's going to work on your Windows XP operating system. If you have questions for me today, and they don't have to be directly uh, related to what we're looking at here today, uh, this is an interactive show and I'm here to answer your questions. That's what this program is all about. Regardless of what your question is, if it has to do with anything technology, give me a call at 705-739-1056. You can also email or MSN me, and that address is tv at robbief.com. We've got lots of questions coming in today. And we're going to just take a look at some of those right now. First of all, we're looking at, okay, I've got some questions coming in about using a digital camera and how can we import our pictures and convert those over to CD. So we can take a look at that. And this is going to be a little bit different for different operating systems, but essentially, I mean, most uh, digital cameras these days are uh, plug and play. A lot of them will actually uh, show up on your computer as an external hard drive when you plug them in, which is great because you can then use them for copying files as well. I've just got a simple uh, HP PhotoSmart uh, camera. It's just a basic digital camera, but it gets the job done. Six megapixels. It's just the standard, the norm, uh, over-the-counter kind of digital camera. So I'll just take a quick photo of us right here. There we go. So we're going to import that into our computer. So, and I'm actually, okay, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at how this is done on Ubuntu. Of course, Windows XP is going to do... Well, let's do that first, because I've already got it booted up here, because we're going to be working on that. So just looking over at uh, Windows XP here, and all I'm going to do is just plug in my USB cable. If you've got a card reader, you can pull the uh, card right out of your digital camera and uh, just pop that right into uh, your card reader, and that will just show up as an external hard drive. Windows XP is going to uh, detect this uh, USB device in just a moment. Here it comes. My camera lens is just closing. There we go. So it's going to prompt me if I want to use the scanner and camera wizard. I can just do that. It's the first time I've connected the, the camera, so it's going to bring me through the setup. That's a picture of my hand that I accidentally grabbed as I was plugging in the camera. <laughs> so here's the picture we just took. And I'm just going to highlight that one, make sure there's a check mark, and click Next. Type a name for the group of pictures if you'd like, and it's just going to save it into My Pictures and then the name of the folder, whatever you've put here. If you'd like to de delete the uh, pictures from your camera bef uh, as it's imported, you can check off this box. That's a great idea because you're going to be, um, you're going to want to reuse the camera, and this is your way to keep your camera clean because if you keep on taking photos after photo after photo, your camera's going to fill up eventually and then you're going to run out of space. So by checking that box off to delete the pictures, you're going to be able to clear that off every time you copy your pictures to your computer. And once they're in your computer, you can then copy them back to your computer if you'd like. So I'm just going to, now in this instance, because we're going to also do this in Ubuntu, I'm going to leave that turned off. We want to leave this on the camera. So we're just going to go next. That's going to copy my picture into the computer. And then it's asking what I'd like to do. If I want to publish these via website, I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to hit next and then I'm done. 
So there we go, there's our picture imported into Windows XP. And now, if we want to um, put that onto a CD, Windows XP makes it fairly easy in that, um, well, I'm going to take out the CD that's in there right now. Just like any, uh, like if you were going to send something to, uh, to an email recipient, you can right click on the file, send to, and then email recipient. In this instance, we just want to send it to our CD burner. So, back at our Windows XP desktop. There we go. So we're just going to right click on that file name, send to, and then you can see my DVD RW drive right here. I know it's hard to see because of the small screen, but uh, you'll see that if you, if you bring that up on your own Windows XP computer, you'll see DVD uh, rewriter or your CD rewriter, and then it just says that you have files waiting to be written to the CD. So then if you click on that, that's going to bring up your folder that has all of the files here that are going to be written to your CD. But they're not written there yet, so what we need to remember to do is pop that blank CD in there, and then over here you see a button that says write these files to CD. That's going to finalize everything that we're doing here, and then that's going to uh, create that disk for you so that you can share it with friends, so that you can uh, take it to, um, to a photo finishing store if you'd like. Again, if you have a digital camera card though, you can take that in as well. Uh, if you'd like to create like a slideshow, there's products that are available um, that will do that for you. Wonderful products. Uh, one that definitely comes to mind is from Cyberlink. Uh, I can't think of the name of the particular product, but what I'll do is I'll, well, I can look it up right now. Uh, I know that they have Power Director and Power Producer. Those are both excellent, excellent products, but they're probably a little bit too um, vast for what you're wanting to do here. If you're wanting to just create slideshows, let's bring up Cyberlink here. <coughs> and we're booting the other system into Ubuntu so we can import from our camera in that operating system. Ah, here we go. Cyberlink Media Show. So I'll give a link to that on the website as soon as the show is uh, done tonight. So that will be in our episode index on uh, tv.robbyf.com. So it's called Cyberlink Media Show 3, and that, that's the current version. That's a Windows XP application. It's also compatible with Vista, um, so it won't work if you're using Ubuntu. Uh, but there are other products, and of course, if you go back to some of our earlier episodes, uh, in particular episode 2 of Category 5, you'll be able to see how we can virtualize so that you can install Windows XP into Ubuntu, and, um, and this is a product that will work in a virtualized environment just fine, so you'll be able to do that. So now we're over at Ubuntu here, and I'm just going to bring that up on, you, on your screen here. <coughs> and I'm going to do the same thing, where here we are in Ubuntu Gutsy, and uh, I'm going to just turn on my camera. It's already connected into the uh, USB port. Oh, no, it wasn't. It fell out. So, okay. I plugged it into the USB port now. My camera's a little slow here, but there we go. Ubuntu tells us that a camera has been detected. Again, just like Windows there, we didn't have to install any drivers or anything like that. It's very straightforward. With Ubuntu, we just go Import Photos. It's going to tell us the name of our camera, HP PhotoSmart M525. And then it gives us the uh, thumbnails of all the pictures that are currently stored within that camera. I only want this one, pardon me, so um, I'm just going to highlight that, but if you'd like you can control click to click multiple uh, photos. And then we're going to drop that into our pictures folder. If you want to give it names, that's fine. Again, here's that option, delete imported images from the camera. And again, that's going to help you to maintain your camera. So as you're importing them, they're automatically be being deleted and you never have to wonder whether the photos have been imported or not. Uh, and then there's another neat option, rotate images physically. So what that does is it looks at the X inf information, uh, the orientation tag in your camera. So if you're holding your camera sideways when you take the photo, uh, this product is going to automatically recognize that because of, you know, as long as your camera supports that. Uh, and then it's going to write the uh, image for you. So I've highlighted that image there that I want to import and I'm just going to push import. And that's as simple as it is. So that's going to draw it right into my computer. There it goes, and now I've got that image in my computer, and I can look at that anytime. Uh, I can throw that up, and I can do with Ubuntu, uh, right out of the box, I can do some pretty great uh, slideshows and things like that. And we're not going to get into that today, 
but uh, there are screen savers even, uh, the uh, GL screen savers that uh, allow you to do 3D rotating uh, image screen, sa screen savers and things like that. So I hope that that answers your question well. And again, look at our website after the show at uh, www.tv.robbyf.com and I will have a link to that Cyberlink Media show for you. And uh, that's a relatively inexpensive product. They have a free trial program so that you can test the product before you, uh, before you do it. Again, if you'd like to ask any questions, <clears throat> all you have to do is either give me a phone call at 705-739-1056. It's a free call. However, long distance charges may apply, but the uh, support itself is absolutely free. We have a call coming in right now. Thanks for calling into Category 5. You're live on the air with Robbie. Hey, sir. Hi, sir, I have a couple of questions that I'd like to ask you on your show. Sure, who's this? Uh, this is Ben. Hey, Ben, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Barry. Nice to have you on the show. What can I do for you? Uh, I've been watching your show for the last few episodes and trying to help solve uh, some of my problems. Great. I've got a couple here. Okay. Saving a file or a document or a picture to a folder, uh, but when after I created a folder and went back to the folder which I have named, say, uh, George's Pictures, I see that nothing uh, has been saved. The file is not saved. Okay. Do I need an extension to create that folder of some sort? Uh, what operating system are you running, then? Yeah. I'm operating uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu? Okay. Um, when you're uh, creating the folders, how are you going about creating the folders? Are you doing that through, um, like, your places and then your home? Are you creating them on your desktop, or how are you doing that? Well, when I go to... Um, Save as, it, it'll bring me to the area where it says uh, uh, select the area that you want to save it. So I click uh, uh, home and then I look into uh, uh, documents, but then I want to create a folder to specifically name those pictures or, okay. or file. Uh, I do that and then I click save. Yep. And then when I go to the uh, Mm -hmm. It indicates that there's nothing saved. Okay. Can I get you just uh, turn down your computer speakers for me, Ben? I'll do that. We're just getting a little bit of feedback there. Now, are you looking at the screen right now? Can you see? Um, I'm going to put up uh, an Ubuntu window here. Okay. So when you go in, are you actually bringing up your documents folder like this, and you're right-clicking and going create folder like this? Correct. So that's how you're doing it. So you're creating a folder here called George's Pictures. Pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've made a folder, and then you're going into that folder, and it's empty. Okay. And then where are you saving, what program are you using to save the images into that, that folder? Are you saving them from email? Are you saving them from... Okay, from email, sorry. From yes. email? Okay. So, um, now I don't have an email address uh, set up on this computer. Um, we just installed it, but um, let's just do that really, really quickly. Are you using Evolution? Are you using uh, Thunderbird? You're using Evolution or Thunderbird? with the calendar and everything? That's correct. Okay. So let's just set that up real quick. Um, my resolution might be low on that. but uh, Okay, did you have any other questions while we're at it? Yes, one more. Um, I believe it was, uh, say if I want to copy a saved picture into, and I want to use this as a desktop background. Yeah, okay. See, I'm not going to be able to, unfortunately, because my resolution on this, this is a screen capture device, it's not going to let me uh, create an evolution email account. Let's, is there, um, so you're saving from, just back to your first question, you were saving from your email, Correct. and you're specifying to save it in George's Pics? Correct. I know with, um, sometimes what, what might happen, um, have you got one of those emails up on your screen right now that you can try it on your screen? I can do that. Okay. Just let me know when you're up. In the meantime, while Ben is getting that set up, if you have any questions for uh, for me tonight, all you have to do is just go onto our website at tv at robbie or tv dot robbie f dot com. You can also email or MSN me tv at robbie f dot com. Okay. You all set up, Ben? I'm all set up here. Okay. okay so I've got a picture. We'll see. Okay. What format is that picture in? Uh, is it a JPEG or? 
Uh, how can I tell? Um, does it show the extension, like .jpg? No, these are on slides. Oh, okay, so it's a PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentation. Oh, okay. So, in your PowerPoint presentation, you're trying to save it from the PowerPoint presentation? Correct. Into oh, uh, I see. So you're trying to export from PowerPoint. So you're bringing it up out of your email. It's coming up into, uh, you're in Ubuntu, so probably um, uh, presentations, open office presentations? or. Yeah, well, what I want to do is yeah, save it from, from that presentation, PowerPoint presentation, to, to a file. Okay, and but you're wanting to export just the I one... I go to from file and save as. But you're wanting to export just the one uh, slide. Okay. So is that right? Export. You're wanting to export the one slide? Yes. Okay. Can you... What I'll get you to do, um, forward that to me. Is that email private or is that something you can forward to me just so that I can bring it up on my main... I can have it in the world. Okay. Pictures. Forward that over to tv at robbyf.com. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch for that right now. And I'm just going to bring it up on my on my main system here uh, because I do have uh, evolution and all that set up on here. So I can uh, I can walk through this with you on that computer. Okay, so tv at robbie.com. Robbyf.com, short for Ferguson? Yes. Got it. Okay. And you're waiting for that. Okay. Is that sent? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then there's an email document. Right? Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Just in the like just forward it. Right. Like just the entire email is fine. Okay. My screen says you cannot attach the file. Oh well, just just forward the the original email then. Oh, okay then. So just grab that original email that's incoming to you, the one that you're opening up, and just I understand. just forward that. Yeah. Okay. That way I can see exactly what you're seeing. Uh, I'm a little slow on the time. No, that's, that's the fine, that's fine. That's why I got a one hour show instead of a half hour show. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Has that been forwarded? It's away. It's away? Okay, great. Okay, so while we're waiting for that file to arrive, um, if anyone else has any questions, all you have to do is get onto, onto our website at www.tv.robbyf.com. And of course, you can also MSN or email me at the same address, tv at robbyf.com. And I'll be happy to answer any technological questions that you may have. You sent that off to tv at robbyf.com, Ben? That's correct. Okay, I'm just waiting for it. Does it sit in your outbox? Uh, this seems to go. I'm going to do this again. <laughs> okay. We'll watch for it. TVRobbyF at dot com. Close. What you said? It's TV, short for television. Yes. At. That's the at symbol. Oh, I, I, that's my mistake. So it's TV at Robbie. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. All right. RobbieF.com. No problem. We'll get there. Oh, yes. Let me know when that leaves your outbox there, Ben.
we're going to get this. Uh, okay. Okay, what am I going to do, Ben? Uh-huh. Just excuse me one second. I'm just going to get your email address off of you here. And I'm going to drop you an email just so that you have uh, my email address right away. So all you have to do is just copy this email address, okay? There. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put you back on. Okay, so I've sent you an email. You can just copy my email address directly from that rather than verbally trying to take it. Okay. All right. Does that come through okay? All right, it's coming. All right, so you can see my new my email address there, just so you know where to email to. All right. Getting that done. screenshots and stuff if there isn't an export feature, but I'm sure there is, and then there's going to be an export. So what you're seeing in your slideshow is uh, you're actually seeing pictures? Yes. So he's placed pictures within the slideshow? That's correct. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, just quickly create a slide here on my own computer, and I'm sorry I can't show you what I'm doing. It doesn't, it's not really relevant. I just want to try to emulate what you're seeing. like a wallpaper or something on my system that I can save in here. Here we go. Okay, so when you're doing this, Ben, are you actually pushing file and then save as kind of thing? Is that when you've got PowerPoint up? Okay, or, uh, let me double check this uh, yeah. when I do that. Open Office Impress is bringing up, or Presentation Impress is bringing up your pro, your. Uh, well, slide. I'm using uh, the PowerPoint now, the presentation which is coming up, and I want to save as. And what's okay. happening is uh, the name is coming up and is telling the yeah. uh, name of the uh, photograph, and it says save in folder. So I would select either a folder from that area, mm -hmm. or browse for other folders. Okay. What we want to do, Ben, let's bring up the slide on your screen that you uh, that you want to use. All right, so tell me when you're there. I'm here. I'm, I've got the slide up. Okay, so you see that graphic there? So you see the picture? Yes. I want you to single click on it, just one click, and then you're going to see these green boxes that go around to each corner. Uh, on PowerPoint, right? On, on Open Office Impress, yeah. You're, oh, you're oh I have to bring it over to that then. Yeah, bring, it, bring up the document. I have to export it or import it. Or just open it in power in uh, Impress, yeah. Oh, double, I see. Like okay. double click on the attachment. Yeah, I understand. So I go uh, file, uh, export, or no, no, just open it. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, my screen comes up. Uh, uh, places, desktop, file system, copy, and my pictures. And okay, so you you've got an email attachment that's a PowerPoint document. Uh, It, you can see the slides, right? I can see the slides. Okay, I want you to get to that point where you're looking at the slides. Um, I'm looking at the slides. Okay, so now 
go to the slide that you want. Yes. And then I want you to just click on that picture just once. Okay, on, on your the screen. only thing I see is that when I click on it, uh, it's just highlighting the box. That's right. Uh -huh. Okay, now right click on that. Right click, hide slide or copy. That's what you're seeing? Yes. Let me just see here. Up at the top of your screen, does it say the document title and then openoffice.org impress? What does it say right there? Uh, What's the name of the program? Or on the top of my screen? Like the, like uh, the top of the... Uh, it says openoffice.org impress. It does, eh? Read only. Uh, okay. And when you right click on the picture, like not the small picture, the big one. It says alignment, arrange, flip, or convert. <laughs> oh, that's, that's just, that just happens to be hiding in there, right? Eh? That's right. Now that's right behind that picture. See, that's what I was waiting for you to find. Oh, I found it. Okay, so that's what we want is uh, save this picture. Uh -huh. <laughs> I knew that was going to be in there, my friend. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah. So you click on that one. See, what you've been doing is you've been going file save hey, that. Now I got a blank uh, box that says name. Yeah. So now in name, give that picture. Uh, a name, but make sure you end it with .jpg. That would be called an extension? That's right. So, um, so whatever it is, like if it's a picture of a field, you can call it field.jpg. And you can put spaces in the, the file name. J -E -G. So I would name it, for instance, I said earlier, George dot .j yeah. dot .jpg, you said? JPG. 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 Yes. Yeah. Are you? If you're on MSN, then it would be a lot easier to uh, like I can send you these kinds of things. Just okay. MSN me a. Does it save in a folder? Yeah. And I want to select the folder. Yep. So now bring up the folder, save it in there. Uh, and then so you I see click it. on say a document uh, that I want to put in, and click save. Then. As long as you've given that that dot JPG name, yeah. Yes. So you want to set that as your desktop background? Yes. Okay. Let me boot back into Ubuntu on this other system here. Okay. I've got a few other questions here, so I'm just going to look at. I'm just going to watch some of the uh, messages that are coming in here. Uh -huh. And if anyone does have any questions, uh, very busy show today. I'm happy to answer any questions. We're on for another half hour, and this is a live broadcast. And uh, you're welcome to just give us a call at 705-739-1056. You can also MSN or email me at tv at Robbie F tv at robbyf.com Okay. That's almost booted there, Ben. Okay. Now I've got a question coming in from Carol about PowerPoint. Uh, Carol, what version of PowerPoint are you using? It's kind of ironic that we're talking about open office impress and then we're getting questions about PowerPoint. Maybe this just sparked a conversation piece or something. So I'm going to be jumping between Windows and Linux here, back and forth from different products. So I've got Ubuntu booted up here for you then. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, <clears throat> let's just um, now I don't this is a brand new fresh system so I'm going to have to you're going to have to use your imagination here uh, because I don't have the images that you're looking at but I, I did create that George's Picks folder here uh -huh. in, in documents so let's let me just put a picture in there I'm just going to grab something off the web.
going to jump over to interface lift. It's my favorite place to get wallpaper for my computer. And I'm just going to download a, an image here. Looks like that one's not coming through. It's always during the live show that something goes weird and for some reason when you click on an image it's not coming up. <laughs> and I've never had that happen. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to... We're just doing this as a demonstration for you, Ben, so I'm just going to save the thumbnail. It doesn't matter that it's low resolution at this point because it's just for a demo. So I'm just going to drop that into uh, my George's Pics folder. <clears throat> so now what I've done is I've put that picture and it's just a little thumbnail, but so it's going to look granular once I blow it up full screen, but that's going to be, we're going to pretend that that's the picture that you just saved, okay? Okay. So that's in my documents, George's pics, and then there's my file. So all I want to do in Ubuntu is go back to my desktop here, okay? Yes. And just right-click on your desktop one time, and down at the bottom you're going to see a button that says Change Desktop Background. All right. So we're going to click that. Nice and simple. Then we're going to, because this has never been loaded, this picture before, we're going to have to add it. So there's a button right here that says Add, and I click on that, and I'm just going to go into, I see documents over here, George's pics, and there's my picture. So now I open that, and now I have the option, do I want to zoom, do I want to scale it, do I want to fit it to screen? And you can play with those different options. Each one is going to look a little bit different on your screen, and you can see my thumbnail up here shows me kind of how it's going to look. Okay? So I want to just zoom, I just want to zoom that, and it's going to allow it to fill the entire screen. So boom, now I've got that image set as my desktop wallpaper. Okay? Uh, unclear. Uh, okay, I've, I've done the right click and gone to the change background. Yeah. And the uh, screen comes up with the different uh, back, uh, backgrounds. Okay. And how do I find mine? You press the add button, add, add wallpaper. Add wallpaper. Yeah, if you're using Feisty, it will say add wallpaper. And then go to and find it into wherever I put it in. Yeah. And I see it. And <laughs> Voila. And there you go. I think so. Right on. Okay. Got it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Well, thanks for your call, Ben. All righty. Take okay. care. I'll well, continue watching your show and may have some more questions later on. Great. Thank you. Have thanks. a great evening. You bye too. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Back to Carol's question here. She's looking at. Um, PowerPoint. She was uh, putting together a PowerPoint presentation with about 50 pictures, and these days, I mean, even your over-the-counter cameras, 6 megapixels, they're going to build up uh, pretty large files. So what's happened is that file, that PowerPoint file, became 173 megabytes, and uh, it started to crash uh, the computer that they wanted to run it on. So uh, so she's wondering about uh, compressing those, those images, resizing them down without having to recreate the PowerPoint uh, slideshow. Uh, you'll be happy to know, Carol, that that is absolutely possible. Um, she's saying that she has version 2002, and that's a good thing because as of version 2002 and beyond, uh, Microsoft has implemented the compression and resizing uh, with ratios uh, into their software. So all you have to do, um, and I'm going to, you know, I can boot up my computer here into Windows so I can show you, but it's pretty straightforward, um, and I can forward you the information right on MSN, uh, but basically you're going to right-click on the picture and choose Format Picture, and then in the format dialog, you're going to push the uh, picture tab and then push compress. And that's going to allow you to, um, you're going to apply that to the image. You're going to uh, be able to make the, uh, the picture a lot smaller. And you can select multiple images, I believe, as well. Uh, so you can play with that. That's going to um, use JPEG compression for your images so that they're, you know, if they're uh, larger images, they're going to be able to be a lot smaller. But then the next thing is that we want to change the resolution because if those are, you know, let's say it's a mega, uh, six megapixel or ten megapixel image that's meant to be uh, massively huge. When you know PowerPoint typically is going to be running at 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768 if it's running off of a good laptop, or you know, but it's going to be based on what your projector is. So you look at your projector uh, that you're going to be you know doing the presentation with, and if it's a an XGA projector, I think that's 800 by 600 for a VGA, and XGA is going to go up to 1024 by 768, and you know just look at the the um, proportions, the 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 um, 
the resolution of your projector to determine how you know what the smallest is that you want to go. If it's an if it's a 1024 by 768 uh, projector, you don't want to go down to 800 by 600 because then you're going to get some granularity there. Um, so the other um, the other tab that you want to choose is uh, change resolution, and then um, there will be some different options there to to allow you to change the resolution. So see if that helps you, Carol and uh, hopefully that will make that file a whole lot smaller for you. So let us know. Uh, drop over to uh, www.tv.robbyf.com once you've given it a go. I know you probably won't have a chance to do it during the show, but, um, but certainly that should give you uh, a lot of help. So. At the beginning of tonight's show, I promised that we're going to be looking at a new uh, program from Otaku Software, and uh, I definitely want to take a look at that right now. <coughs> What this does, um, I'm just going to bring up Windows XP over on my other screen. We've been looking the past few days, uh, or the past few weeks rather, um, at software from Ubuntu, Barrel Project, Compass Fusion, all this really great 3D desktop spinning and how productive that can be. It's basically like having, you know, if you've got four cube faces, uh, you've basically got essentially like four working spaces, so it feels like you have four computers. If you're a power user, if you work in an office where you're constantly, you know, opening tons and tons of things and you're filling up that Windows taskbar beyond measure and it's becoming hard to keep yourself organized uh, and define the programs, I mean, when things start grouping together, you can't remember, okay, if I've got 15 Internet Explorer windows open, uh, what am I, you know, which one is which? So having that cube, fa uh, the four faces on your cube is going to make things a lot more productive because you've got four times the desk space. Uh, and then, of course, there's other options like tab browsing with Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer 7, and things like that. But not to get into that, looking at the three-dimensional, because there's also the coolness factor uh, of when someone walks into your office and says, hey, how did you do that? So tonight we're looking at a product for Windows XP uh, from Otaku Software called Top Desk and Desk Space. Now you can see this is just a typical uh, Windows XP installation. I've dropped my interface lift uh, uh, wallpaper on the background there. And this is just a straight Windows XP professional install. This works on uh, any version of Windows XP. Uh, but I've just put this on here just to demonstrate that, you know, if you don't, if you can't make that move into Linux and you want to try, you know, the 3D desktop operating system, well, guess what? Here in Windows XP, we can do pretty much the same thing. I mean, this is a an incredible piece of software from Otaku Software and uh, they're offering this for $30 uh, US and uh, you can get this on your computer. Windows XP now allows you to have your four cube faces. So you don't have to switch to Linux to get that feature if that's a selling point for you. This doesn't have uh, some of the advanced features that you come to love from Linux. Um, for example, the um, you know the wobbly windows just aren't there. Uh, it's just straight Windows XP with the fact that you've got these extra features. Now, but there is a cool feature that comes from uh, basically from Windows uh, Vista, and that's your uh, Flip 3D kind of task switching that, uh, that this system includes. Now, th these are two, two different products uh, that you have to either purchase separately or together, but they are, you know, they are two separate installers, two separate products, and they may eventually migrate these two things together. But essentially, now the cube face is called Desk Space, and uh, then the Flip 3D interface or the task switching that I'm about to show you is called Top Desk. So we'll just switch right back to that. And I've just brought up a couple of windows here just to show you quickly my task switching features. So just like Windows Vista, here I am on Windows XP being able to, you know, still have that kind of cool kind of motion and, uh, and, and very visual task switching features. And not only that, but we've got some buttons that that uh, the top desk is placed down here. We've got hide visible windows, which just kind of throws everything down out of your way, so that you can see what's on your desktop. This is going to instantly give you the task switching, which is also the same as pushing, pardon me, your Windows button and the Tab key. <coughs> and then another cool feature, if you want to kind of tile things on your screen, is just pop this button right there, and that fits everything that's open onto one screen and then you can just click on the one that you want to bring to the forefront. So that's Top Desk. And this is Desk Space. The two products are from Otaku Software and they're available for Windows XP at otakusoftware.com and we're going to actually put up a link to that software. I think it's a great product and it's a, an excellent way to uh, 
give yourself those great features that uh, that people have come to love from Ubuntu and from Linux and from Barrel Project and Compass Fusion and Compass, but being able to do it uh, to some degree, anyways, on the uh, Windows XP desktop. And again, you're not getting all of the same features that you would get from Barrel Project. It is a completely separate project, and of course, being for Windows, there there's certain things that it can and can't do. Um, it's it's an excellent product, and I recommend that you check that out. So. Looking at some of the questions here that we have coming in, a couple of questions about uh, Otaku's product here. a question from Ashley uh, out in the UK and she's asking about uh, how to do live preview with uh, with desk space. I'm just wondering Ashley are you did, did my uh, demonstration there of uh, top desk did that already kind of answer your question? Is that what you're looking for the kind of flip 3d style task switching? <laughs> okay Ashley's a, a guy sorry about that Ashley. one of those universal names, you know. If you have any questions, all you have to do is drop me an MSN or email at tv at robbief.com. You can also phone me up at 705-739-1056. Another question just coming in, oh, and, and just re receiving a response from Ashley here. Ashley's just going to explain what he's uh, asking about there, and I'm going to go back to uh, this this question that's just coming out about how to use a USB card, and in brackets says mini drive. So I'm expecting that you mean a flash card or flash drive, um, something. Of, I'm just going to pull mine up here. So I've got uh, this little guy here, fits you know pretty much anywhere and easily lost. You got to be careful with these things. This carries four gigabytes of data, so. Uh, basically, you know, almost the size of a DVD I can fit onto this one little chip and uh, it's extremely handy. You, you look at this and you think that there's not much of an interface, but um, you basically just pop that right into the USB port. It doesn't need to have, you know, the full uh, USB kind of connected, uh, you know, connector because that just fits right in. So at first I was reluctant because it looks so small that you just think it's flimsy and going to break, but it's not. And uh, now this is from uh, King Max, the thing that got me uh, to buy this was the fact that it comes with a lifetime warranty, so I thought, eh, you can't go wrong. So with this product, I, I can carry four gigabytes of files with me anywhere I go, so, you know, as a technician, I carry, you know, device drivers and uh, freeware software. I carry, always carry a copy of openoffice.org on here and Firefox and just the generic stuff that I'll ever, uh, you know, have a client that, uh, that wants something installed, I can do that here. And I'll carry around antivirus products, uh, installers and things like that so that I can just call up my suppliers and, uh, and just obtain uh, license keys from them. So it's perfectly legitimate to do it. I just carry the, the setup executables uh, and then obtain the license keys by phone and then uh, I've got a, a way to uh, very, very quickly install a product. If I am working at a client and, you know, they've got a virus, I can, you know, install the product, get the virus off of there, register it to them, then send them an invoice and we're good to go. So just looking at how this is used, um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I don't really need to get into a whole lot of, uh, you know, show and tell here, but I'm just going to pop this right into my USB port, whether it be Windows XP or 
uh, Ubuntu, it doesn't matter what operating system you're using, you're going to get, it's just going to, there's my drive. So as soon as you plug it in, you get a, you know, removable disk or whatever, and uh, that's going to give you access to that drive. I blanked it off just because there were some personal things on there with business and things, so just so I could demonstrate. I'll just go over to, um, let's just go over to my pictures and grab that crazy picture of me from earlier tonight. And I've just copied that, and I go over to my removable disk and go right-click and paste. And now that's copied onto my external USB drive. In Windows XP, you can just close this out, and without having to do anything extra, you just unplug that drive, and we're good to go. That can now be plugged into any computer. Usually these are like FAT32, so they can be plugged into Windows, Ubuntu, uh, any operating system whatsoever, Mac OS even, and uh, you'll just be able to write and read from this drive, so you don't have to you know, worry about compatibility issues between PCs. Just watch out for viruses if you're sharing it between Windows PCs, because that can become a problem. But uh, So now this has that image on it. Um, in Ubuntu uh, and uh, several other Linux operating systems, some you don't have to, but um, some of them don't. Uh, uh, some uh, some uh, Linux-based operating systems rather uh, use caching, so it makes things faster. So when you copy something to this drive, it's not actually copied right then and there because sometimes that can take some time. If you've ever done a big copy in Windows XP into uh, one of these flash drives, you'll know that it can take a long time because there's no caching. That's what allows you to just unplug it and you're good to go. With Ubuntu on the other hand, because there's caching, it makes it a lot faster um, seeming to copy because you know it will go through that progress indicator like that, but what you don't realize is that boom, then that thing disappears and it's actually still copying the background but using you know idle CPU processes and things like that so that it's not taking a long time. So, um, so to you it seems like it's copied it almost instantly but if you unplug that, it's going to say unsafe device removal and you might lose some of those files that were being copied. So first, what you have to do in Ubuntu is right click on the drive, which is going to show up on your desktop because it's uh, mounted in your media folder, and then choose uh, eject or unmount, uh, one of those options that will allow you to safely remove that device. So that's going to force writing of all the data that's still pending, and then you can eject that safely. Okay, going back to Ashley here. When you open the top desk, the Vista thing, and in the tab you go to Windows, and then in the middle of the page, Windows, and okay. Ashley, do you mean seeing like live thumbnails during Flip 3D so that if there's a movie playing and you do Flip 3D, you can actually see the, um, the animation at the same time? That's, okay, that's what I'm gathering. So um, let's, let's give that a go. I tried it a little earlier today on Ubuntu. Um, that's, that works like that. Um, on, um, on Vista, I'm sure it does as well. I'm, I'm not too sure about uh, Top Desk, but let's give that a go. Um, so let's just drop over to, you know what, we don't even need to do that. Let's just, let's click on me. <laughs> All right. It'd be weird if I actually launched the live stream, wouldn't it? That would be like, this computer, you know what, maybe it's that I don't have Flash installed, and this is Windows XP, so it, it's not, or something. I'm. I don't want to play around with it too much, but I might not be able to uh, launch the broadcast just because I don't I haven't installed anything on here yet. Okay, well let's try YouTube. All right, this will at least get me the Flash player. So I'm going to go through the uh, Flash installation. I just installed Windows XP on this this morning for today's show, so I'll have to go through that. It won't take long, obviously, but that will allow me to do that test for you, Ashley.
lots of questions coming in. I'm going to try to attend to everyone that's coming in uh, within the next nine minutes or so of the show. Uh, if you have any questions, give me a call, 705-739-1056, or you can also email or MSN me at tv at robbyf.com. I'm just installing Flash on this Windows XP system so that we can try to answer this question for, for Ashley. I'm just being prompted a bunch of times with protection and things. Okay, while that's installing, I'm going to look at Tyler's questions here. He says, I have a VMware and gaming question. I'm running Windows XP in a VM to play some lightweight games such as Counter-Strike. I installed the VMware tools. It comes with VMware application, which improved mouse support, but now when I go into my games, my mouse is pretty much useless to aim. My mouse runs fine in any other circumstance. I played with settings in the game itself, but I'm wondering if you ever had this kind of issue. The helpful thing that happened when I installed the VMware tools is that when I have my VM not at full screen, I can run the mouse off of my VM XP desktop and onto my regular native desktop seamlessly. Uh, I've never had that happen, Tyler. Just um, I tend not to really run games in VMware. That's just my own preference. But um, just wondering, uh, now VMware tools is not just your mouse. Obviously, that's probably one of the most significant uh, changes, but it also has your video drivers for the virtual video card and things like that, your sound drivers and things. Um, but as far as um, losing control, are you like unable to make aim? Is it kind of jumpy and like jerking around the screen kind of idea? says it jumps to aim down and if I struggle with it it aims straight up that's pretty much it so it's like it's on like a, an axis like that like just kind of no matter what you do it's just jumping around up and down well I've never uh, unfortunately I've never encountered that Tyler um, and I, let's see I'm, I'm gonna load up my uh, Windows XP virtualization here on my main system and just see if um, see if I can try to emulate anything that you're experiencing or see if we can find a setting that uh, that will take care of that When you hit escape, you're getting regular mouse control. Do you mean you're, it's restoring it back to your host operating system, or? It's restoring regular mouse control to the VM. So on a layer above the game, or? So you're not actually able to control it. So it's it, when you're when you're actually in the like shooting kind of end of things, it's it, that's when it's not working. But if you're using the menu within the game at the same time, it, it works just fine. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can emulate any of this. I've got about five minutes tonight. I'm gonna see what I can do for you. Okay, just uh, as we're waiting on that, I've got uh, last week's video here up on our Windows XP using the uh, Top Desk application. So it looks like Ashley, it seems to have frozen the video as soon as I uh, as soon as I did that. Let's see what it does to the audio. Oh, I'm not getting any audio because it's Windows XP. <laughs> I'm gonna have to install the drivers. So yeah, it's uh, it stops the video that's uh, that's playing there, and that's just a flash video, as you know. Um, so it doesn't seem that uh, that just yet they've implemented the feature to have it uh, continue on. 
Um, I'm sure that that's something that they'll take into account. It's uh, now uh, Top Desk has been around for a couple years. They tell me um, the uh, the other product that they have, uh, Desk Space, is only fairly new, and they're bringing up a new version fairly soon. So we want to keep an eye on that and see what uh, what comes out. But as it is right now, it doesn't look like they support that, unless there's a setting that we're missing or something like that. But I'm just going to look just in case there's something there that's uh, just going to top desk options here. Oh, I think I might have found it actually, Ashley. Okay, let's let's give this a go. Let's see if this resolves that. Let's go back to our Windows XP here, and if this fixes it, I won't tell you what I did until uh, until we know if this works or not. So there wouldn't really be any point. There we go. So now you can see that um, my first assessment was incorrect. That uh, that they do in fact support this feature. It's just not activated by default. So what I've done there is um, within that application. So I'm going to my start menu and then all programs, uh, top desk, top desk options, and then drop over to windows and you'll see the update method. And what I did there is I changed it to update window images continually after tiling. It was default set to update foreground window before tiling all window images once after tiling. So of course it was just basically taking a picture of the window and then leaving it as that picture. So. Uh, by changing it to update window images continually after tiling, you're probably going to be using more uh, CPU uh, resources, uh, but if you have a fast enough computer, I don't see that that would be a problem at all. And you can see it worked just fine there, so you'll be happy to know. Okay, just jumping back, I've got my Windows XP uh, virtualization open here, Tyler. Tyler, just before I get into to this, because I know that you... Uh, you do know enough about computers to know your way around. Have you looked at the VMware tools options and things like that? Have you gone through those already? Because that's you know that's the first thing I'm going to check, knowing that it's probably a VMware tools issue. Yeah, he says that they're fairly limited. Yeah, they certainly. I'm just looking here. Uh, yeah, not a lot of options. But look at your. Um, let's take a look. Preferences. Well, unfortunately, I think, Tyler, just because we're nearing the end of the show and uh, and I don't have a ready answer for you, it looks like we're probably going to have to deal with this another time or perhaps in the forum. If you uh, want to post your question just at www.tv.robbyf.com, certainly if I come across it, I'll, I'll definitely be willing to help you out. Uh, but we do only have, technically we have a minute. I know we're going a little bit over time tonight, but... Uh, I'd like to be able to help you, but unfortunately, within the time that we have left, I'm not going to be able to do that. So, okay. Do you have the option of dual partitioning? Like, I know you're trying to do this through virtualization, but what about dual partitioning? Uh, one of the advantages to the dual partitioning system is the fact that we can utilize your sound hardware. Uh, if you're using 5.1 or 7.1, really nice to have that. Oh, you're using a partition, but you're virtualizing access to the partition. Okay. But yeah, if you get true access to that Windows XP, just for gaming, I mean, uh, then you'll be able to uh, have access to, you know, you know that problem will be gone. I know that that's not a solution that you're looking for. You're looking to do it the way that you're doing it, but at least that will, you know, that will work. Okay, well I'm just looking over the, the final questions here. I know that I've got, uh, well we're, we're just a, a moment over time tonight. Uh, I appreciate everyone's questions tonight. It's been a great show and it's been wonderful having you along. Make sure you check out otakusoftware.com for this, uh, this great product for Windows XP, your top desk and your desk space. Um, that's definitely something that you want to look at if you can't make the switch over to Ubuntu Gutsy this Thursday. Look forward to that. Make sure you get that as well. And uh, in the meantime, 
Post your questions. If, if I was unable to get to any of your questions, please go onto the forum at www.tv.robbyf.com and I will be thrilled to uh, help you through that medium. And of course, uh, we can also answer some of your questions next week on our show. And uh, again, thanks for coming along and I uh, hope you have a great night.